Hey, what's up guys? I'm Joe from Workbench. And last time you guys liked me drinking, and I can't argue with that. So let's talk about some rubber stamps. All right, so here's what we're looking at. We're gonna replicate that uh, rubber stamp distressed look. The biggest characteristic of that is that the edges don't really have any sort of texture, it's all inside the center. Because usually the edges of the stamp is kind of where all the ink flows out to, and the inside is usually the lightest part. We have a big stack of effects over here, and if you're a patron, you can download a preset that has most of them in it. But to get the look that you want, you're gonna have to tweak things around anyway. So I'm gonna show you the base of everything, and you're gonna have to experiment and tweak it on your own. So let's turn these effects off and go through them one by one. So our first thing is our fractal noise layer. And as you can see here, we're not really putting a whole lot of noise into it. We have our scale set pretty low. In this case, it's three. I left the complexity at the default, although you can change that to get different looks. And I have the sub settings as default. But you can scale this down or scale it up as you see fit. So if you change the actual style of this, you can get a bunch of different things. Here we're using terrain, but you can also use max. Some of the stuff later on uses max up here. And I believe it also uses soft linear instead of linear. One thing to note is that I've linked the offset turbulence to the actual position of the layer using an expression. It's just straight up picked whipped. That way, if I move this thing around, the texture stays the same. All right, so let's close that up. The next thing is a simple choker to bring everything in from the edges. And since this is limited to 100, we actually have another one set to 78 or so. It's to bring it all in a good bit. You can also substitute this for matte choker if you want this to be more even. All right, so let's close those up. And then we have a roughen edges because otherwise you'll see exactly where the noise ends and we don't really want that. So we're gonna roughen this up. You can also move this fractal noise down here if you want after the roughen edges. It's kind of up to whatever look you want. I'll show you what that looks like in a little bit. All right, so the next thing we have is Gaussian blur on there. It's only set to a low value of like two and a half. This actually helps a lot to determine how big these little dots are. So after that, we have an unsharp mask that's kind of cranked. As you can see, we have the amount set to 273. The radius is 23.1. We have a zero threshold. So if I change this and make this a little bigger, you can see the dots are gonna become a little bit more blurry, but they're also enlarged. So you can crank this even more and make them bigger. Probably have to go a lot more to get them not blurry, but that's kind of how you do that. So I'm gonna undo that. All right, we'll close those up. And our next and most important thing is CC composite. So what we're doing here is bringing the original back in behind. Now by default, I think this RGB only thing is checked. And if you have that, you're gonna get this. And that's because while this will copy the original behind everything like we have set, it'll still take the alpha from what we've done. So if you turn this off, it ignores that, which gives us the black back into our edges. And then I just have a tint to change the color up a little bit, and then a roughen edges for the edges out here. So you can see they have a little bit of bump to it. The roughen edges is actually not set very high. The border is four, sharpness is one, the scale is 71. But obviously you have to change these things to taste and it depends on the size of your object and all that kind of stuff. So if we close this up, you can see the order that I have here. So here you can see we have fractal noise before everything. In this other version, we have it after everything. So you can kind of see it adds a little bit more in. It's not a lot, but if you want a slightly different look, you can do that. And don't forget if you can actually go back into your fractal noise and at the bottom, evolution actually has a random seed. So you can change that up to get different stuff here. You can also change up the evolution itself. I'm gonna undo those real quick. So let's look at another look over here. So in here, the workbench logo comes from the pre-comp we were just in. And then we started working on the text. So the text, instead of having two simple chokers, because that was too much, we brought it back down. And it's not choked in as far. Then we have our rough and edges, and obviously that's tweaked a little bit differently. Our Gaussian blur is 2.2 instead now. Our unsharp mask goes way higher. And then we're compositing back in here. Then we have our tint, and we have a rough and edges that's not as high. But I also made a different version, which I kind of like a little bit better, because it cuts in here a little bit better. If you look there, there's a switch between the two. You can see that some of these go closer to the edges, and that's not exactly how it would be. It doesn't work as well like this. That's because the simple choker doesn't choke in the same way. So I'm going to turn this off behind so we can see. Turn all these off real quick up to the matte choker. So you can see this one's a lot more even. If I turn on a simple choker, you can see it's a little bit more odd. And that near these edges up in here where it's really thick, it doesn't choke in as much. But here it's a lot more even. So then if we run the rest of it, we get that instead. And this is a lot more accurate to the actual look. And if we look at our fractal noise, you can see we're actually running max and spline. The brightness and the contrast are different so that we can get a different look. We can bring this in differently and get a little bit lighter or we can go back to what we had. All right, so let's look at the other text down here because it's a little bit different. As you can see, it has a lot more of the inside messed up and the outside is remaining. So it's like a lot drier of a stamp. 
So in here we're running max and linear, and our brightness is way up. Instead of the other ones where it's down to a negative value, this one's up higher. So you can go even more if you want, but then it starts to look a lot more unnatural. So I'm going to bring it back. We're still using a regular simple choker up in here, but you can switch it to a matte choker and bring this up a little bit. But on this text, I actually felt that it looked pretty good this way. Our Gaussian blur is set the same way. Our unsharp mask is still cranked like the other one. We still have our CC composite, our tint, and our same roughened edges. That's just a little bit less rough. So that's pretty much it. The way this is done and the kind of order of it doesn't really matter too much. As long as you're basically applying the texture to the inside of everything and adding the border area back in with CC composite. Then you just rough in the edges to taste and you're all set. So I hope you guys like that one. I like this look and I think I'm going to try to explore more of it in animation. All right, guys, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you want to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. I try to put up presets and elements and stuff up there for you guys to use. Make sure you check out our blog on workbench.tv. And as always, I am Joe, and I'll see you guys next week. Cheers. Cheers.